In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, cholesterol. Uh, I'm also going to talk about uh, HDL, which stands for high density lipoprotein, and also LDL, which stands for low density lipoprotein. I'm going to talk about uh, how those all fit together. And then I'm going to talk about why this is important and why we should all care. Hey everyone, uh, I have a, a small request from this side of the camera. My returning subscribers know what that is. Please uh, smash that like button on the way in. And if you're new, also please consider subscribing to the channel. So I want to start off by acknowledging those of you who humored me on my community tab a couple of days ago. I took a picture of some items I purchased at Wegmans and I asked the question, which one of these products contains cholesterol? Thank you to those of you who participated. So I think one person got it right. And the takeaway message from that whole exercise or game, whichever you want to call it, is that plants don't generate cholesterol. Uh, only animals do. And I believe aquatic organisms like salmon and tuna and other aquatic organisms, they probably do too. But the point is, is that if you want to attempt to lower cholesterol, you want to eat more plant based products and you want to eat fewer um you want to eat less animal flesh i don't like saying flesh because it you want to eat less animal protein and if you're trying to lower cholesterol there's a certain class of animal protein that you want to cut out altogether which is the red meat so that was the significance of that exercise slash game. And I'm going to talk about that and why I did that towards the end of this video. So Dr. Dunbar, where did this video come from? Where did this idea come from? Well, everyone, I'm going to share some personal things in this video. Uh, some personal health things in this video. And I'm going to start it off with a little bit of uh, story time. So about a month ago, I went for my my mid-year uh, physical. Actually, your physical is annually. And then, and then you have a, a mid-year, which is, uh, I want to say biannually, but it's actually semi-annually. My, my halfway, the halfway point, the, the halfway point of the year, my six month doctor's appointment. So I thought it was going to be pretty straightforward. And, uh, you know, my, my doctor has been on me about shedding some pounds. I don't know where I was at the beginning of the pandemic, but um, my weight was at a certain number and he's been encouraging me to uh, shed some pounds and due to my lifestyle over the last couple of years that hasn't been easy and there's there were some things i was doing that was negating that so he comes in uh i think it's going to be a pretty simple visit and he says you know we started this assay your your insurance or the insurance companies have allowed us to start um testing for particles. And he says, you have a lot of cholesterol particles uh, in your blood. I want to prescribe a statin for you. And I said, a lot of cholesterol particles in my blood? Really? Me? So there was that whole thing. So that so there's, you know, just kind of registering, okay, I have high cholesterol and my doctor is um, suggesting that I take a medication to lower cholesterol. So that's a whole 
um, that was a lot to process at that time. And it's something I've been processing since that time. And I, I, you know, because I, I always considered myself to be at least somewhat healthy and I never wanted to have to get on some sort of medication. And especially if, uh, there, there is a natural means for treating whatever it is. And I realized afterwards that my primary care physician didn't attempt to go that route first. He went straight for, I want to put you on this medication. He further said, sometimes people, they try natural means to lower their cholesterol and that doesn't work. The statins work really well, but I was still a little bit afterwards, afterwards I thought about it and I said, you know what? I should try a natural means first. And I had questions for him afterwards. He might've been surprised that I had more questions because I just, I just, it just didn't register in my mind that that might be something that I uh, would have to worry about. And so as I was leaving the office, I said, you know, well, well, number one, we should test my blood again, because I did do a cleanse before coming here because I was trying to bring my weight down and which I did, I did, I did chop some off, but I said, we should read the number again, because when you took it in February, that was right after the holiday season. And there were some other things going on there. So we took the blood again. And uh, I'm going to talk about the results towards the end of this video. Uh, but before I do that, let's have a discussion on um, cholesterol, uh, HDL, high density lipoprotein, and LDL, low density lipoprotein. All right, so in my endocrine disruption video, I talked about, well, to some degree, what cholesterol is. Cholesterol is something that we need. It's the basic building blocks for our sexual hormones, and our bodies actually uh, naturally create, uh, gener our bodies naturally generate cholesterol, the enzyme in the liver because cholesterol is generated in the liver is called hmg coa uh, reductase so hmg coa reductase and that is actually the target for statin drugs okay so our bodies make some cholesterol we need some but too much is not good so this is from the CDC website. I will leave the link below in the description box. And also, shout out to Dr. Larry Thompson, who was one of my professors at Johnson C. Smith University in Charlotte, North Carolina. I don't know that he's still with us, but he was the first professor slash teacher to educate me on LDL and HDL cholesterol. So LDL and HDL, these are forms, these are forms of circulating cholesterol. So this reads as follows. This is short. What are LDL and HDL cholesterol? Cholesterol travels through the blood on proteins called lipoproteins. Two types of lipoproteins carry cholesterol throughout the body. LDL or a low density lipoprotein uh, cholesterol, sometimes called bad cholesterol, makes up most of your body's cholesterol. High levels of LDL cholesterol raise your risk for heart disease and stroke. See, I didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't know that that was most of the body's cholesterol. So, okay, I'm going to get to that and, and why that's important. HDL uh, or high density lipoprotein cholesterol, sometimes called good cholesterol, absorbs cholesterol in the blood and carries it back to the liver. The liver then flushes it from the body. High levels of HDL cholesterol can lower your risk for heart disease and stroke. So it's the ratios of HDL to LDL that's critical. When your body has too much LDL cholesterol, 
the LDL cholesterol can build up on the walls of your blood vessels. This buildup is called uh, plaque or plaques or a plaque, and it can cause health problems such as heart disease and stroke. What are triglycerides? Triglycerides are a type of fat in your blood that your body uses for energy. The combination of high levels of triglycerides with low HDL and or high LDL cholesterol levels can increase your risk for health problems such as heart attacks. How do I lower my risk for high cholesterol and triglycerides? You can work to prevent high cholesterol and triglycerides by reducing risk factors that are in your control. You can make healthy lifestyle decisions, such as choosing healthier foods with less saturated fat and quitting smoking. If you already have high LDL cholesterol and triglyceride levels, your healthcare team may recommend medicines that treat high cholesterol and triglyceride levels and lifestyle changes to lower your risk for heart disease and stroke. If you already have low HDL cholesterol levels, talk with your doctor about lifestyle changes that may help raise your levels. Getting your cholesterol checked regularly is an important way uh, of is an important way of staying in control of your cholesterol health. Work with your healthcare team on how often you should get screened. So once again, I'm leaving this link in the description box below. So I said that I would share something personal uh, in this video. So we're going to go over some of my lab work. So we're going to learn something here. And uh, we're going to do some data analysis. I'm thinking about uh, the great, uh, well, I think he's great. Some don't think he's great. Uh, Dr. Willie Soon, uh, who's in the, the part of the whole climate thing. But one of the things he says is, um, one, of, one of the things he said is, show us the data. What did the data say? Show us the data. So as my doctor was talking to me in that room, about a month ago, I was thinking, okay, what does the data show? So fortunately, I could look at it myself. Uh, for my um, healthcare coverage, we have a, um, a patient portal, an online patient portal where records are shared and where lab work is shared and where data is shared. So uh, if you have a patient portal, you can look at your data and that adds an extra dimension to the whole thing because the doctor is not talking right at you like an auto mechanic. You can look and you could see the numbers and you can see the dates, which is what I did because I needed to kind of piece everything together to see when my numbers went up, when my, my numbers went down and when things started going all over the place. And I, and I needed to see what he was looking at. So. I'm going to show you some of my lab work and keep in mind, this is what your doctors are looking at when they come back and they give you your hemoglobin numbers or your cholesterol numbers or your calcium numbers. So they pull your blood and they have all of these assays and tests for your blood to see what your levels are looking like. And if something is off, that's when they come in and say, hey, you have too much of this or too much of that or we need to do a secondary test on this or a secondary test on that. Also keep in mind that there are levels for everything. So there are, when they test your blood, there's a standard range for each measurement. So whether it's hemoglobin or calcium or cholesterol or iron or sugar, there's a, uh, a standard range. So if you have too little of something, that can raise concern. And if you have too much of something, that can raise concern as well. All right, everyone. So you're, you're looking at my data right now. So this is lab work on my blood. And this is for educational purposes only. So I wanted to know what he saw uh, back in February 
that made him come into the office, that made him come into the examination room in July and tell me that I had high cholesterol, uh, a lot of cholesterol particles floating around. And, and uh, another thing that occurred to me is that I don't recall him saying anything until six months later. Now, I did see that he messaged me this last time. So if you have a patient portal, your doctor might not call you. He might send you a message in the patient portal, assuming that you'll take a look. But that's why I was surprised when he came in six months later and said this. So this, uh, if you look at that, uh, that row in red, that's cholesterol. That's total cholesterol. So my value was 205. And the reference range is less than 200 milligrams per deciliter. Okay, so I was above by five units. Mm, not a big deal, but I was above. And also, I'm not showing this, but back in 2020, right before the pandemic started, that number was within the range. Okay, so looking at my LDL cholesterol, uh, I have a, uh, a 142. Uh, that is, uh, in, once again, in milligrams per deciliter, and the range is less than 100, the reference range. So you want to be ideally less than 100 milligrams per deciliter. So I'm above, I was above by uh, 42 uh, units. Okay, so looking at uh, non-HDL cholesterol, and I don't know the difference between LDL cholesterol and non-HDL cholesterol, I'm assuming these are similar, I, uh, at that time, was at 160 milligrams per deciliter, and the uh, ideal uh, value, it looks like, was to be below 70 milligrams per deciliter. So I was over by, uh, geez, 90 units. Okay, so... Before this doctor visit, I was focused on lowering my weight. So I did I did a cleanse before. So I cut out the meat for about seven days, six to seven days. I cut out sugar, cut out certain things. And I actually did I actually did peel off. Right? I actually did shed about 10 pounds. So I said, okay, well, what do the numbers show now that I've shed 10 pounds and I went uh, basically without dairy and meat and sugar and those things for a week. What are the numbers now? Retest my blood. So what were my numbers after doing that cleanse for about a week and a half? So after the cleanse or Maybe it was the time of year. Maybe it was something else. Maybe it's because we weren't right after the holiday season where, you know, people are eating lots and lots of food, lots of lots and lots of uh, fatty food and uh, salty food and cholesterol rich food. But I think it was the cleanse. So if you, if you look at my cholesterol here, my cholesterol is back within the range. So my cholesterol most recently, my total cholesterol was 178 milligrams per deciliter. The range is less than 200 milligrams per deciliter. So that number, that number came down. My LDL cholesterol was still just above the range. It was still above the range, albeit slightly. So it was 100, 118 milligrams per deciliter. And ideally, one wants to be below that 100. So I was above by 18 units. This was an improvement from February. Uh, the same is true for uh, this, the non-HDL cholesterol. I was at uh, 136 and I think, well, this says less than 130. So if that's the standard, then I was only over by six units. 
but underneath it says uh it's preferable to be below 100 so this time i was only over by uh 36. so to me this looked like uh, improvement but was that improvement i was in the portal looking at these numbers again getting ready for the stream and then i saw what my doctor was actually looking at and he was looking at a different data set than the ones that i just showed so this is what my doctor was looking at this is the new uh tool slash method that my insurance now allowed them to use so this is called the lipoprotein fractionation ion mobility test so what i'm seeing is that this is a much more sensitive uh method for measuring cholesterol particles and i'm just getting to know this method now now that i am uh, well embarking on this journey to lower these numbers so so here you can see that i am above the range for everything except for uh the hdl where um ideally the number would be higher but it's slightly lower okay so for my ldl particle number you see those are all in red and the the h there stands for high so uh, my value is uh, 1,878. Ideally, for the reference range, you want to be less than um, 1,138 nanomolar. So nanomole per liter, that uh, designates nanomolar, that designates uh, concentration. So I am over uh, by just under double, okay? For LDL small, so that's 408. The range says you want to be less than 142. So I am about threefold over or twofold over the range. For LDL medium, I am uh, 471 nanomolar. The range uh, ideally for a person. A person, a person would ideally be under 215, so I'm about two, two and a half fold over. For the HDL large, I have a uh, 6,466. For the range you want to be over 6,729 nanomolar. So I'm under by about, well, I'm, I'm not under by a lot, okay? And then uh, my LDL pattern is B. Uh, which is not, doesn't look good. And then my LDL peak size is 216. And uh, it looks like for the reference range, you want to be over 223 angstroms. So this is what my doctor saw in uh, February. And this is what he was uh, alarmed about. So me doing a cleanse for one week leading up to my last doctor's appointment. What did that do? We saw the cholesterol come down. We saw all of them come down. We saw the cholesterol come down. We saw the LDL come down. We saw uh, the non-HDL LDL. I think that's that's what it was called. I think we saw that come down. So everything came down. What did these numbers do? Okay, so while my total cholesterol came down, these actually got slightly worse. Not much. I mean, scientifically, they would be considered about the same, but my LDL particle number is now uh, 2,032. Uh, again, the reference range is optimally, ideally, you want to be less than 1,138 nanomolar. My LDL small is 497. You want to be less than 142. My LDL medium is 460. You want to be less than 215. And then my HDL large 
is 6,241 and you want to be more or greater than 6,729. So again, I'm slightly below that number. My LDL pattern is B and my LDL peak size is 213. And ideally you want to be above 223 angstroms. So I'm slightly below, but either way, after cleansing for a week, the total cholesterol came down, but these numbers are still, um, well, not in the optimal range. And there is still tremendous concern here. So what do you do about something like that? What, what can you do about something like that? Well, first of all, everyone, once again, you know, I wouldn't have shared that personal information if it wasn't for um, a teaching moment. Uh, this is also, uh, well, it's going to be a bit of a journey now to see if I can lower those numbers. Uh, ideally, I would like to do it naturally as opposed to taking a medication. I don't have a, um, a positive feeling about having to take a medication. And I've always been, I thought I've always been kind of healthy. And uh, it's a little scary to think that things are floating around inside you and that, well, something really bad could happen at any moment. So I'm still gathering information. And uh, my goal and my hope is to try to tackle this uh, through natural means, through uh, changing, through a change in diet and through a change in increasing my exercise. I did some research uh, today to start my workday off and I did see that one thing, well, diet is one thing. So, and I do know that over the last three years, there have been, there have been some things that I just haven't paid attention to. And there have been some things that I just haven't kept a tight rein on, such as something simple like drinking uh, half and half creamer with my coffee every morning. So every day, every morning, I've gotten a nice dose of half and half cream. Multiple cups, multiple coffee cups with half and half uh, cream. Uh, I can think about a, a soul food restaurant called Carolina Kitchen that I've been eating at frequently or periodically over the last three to four, well, well, two to three years. And at Carolina Kitchen, they give you nice, big fried pieces of whiting with tartar sauce and nice big helpings of macaroni and cheese and cornbread with it and uh, comfort food. So I've indulged in my share of that. Um, not a lot of eggs, some every now and then, some butter, some cheese melted in the eggs. So I'm saying that to say that there are some things that I haven't kept a tight rein on, but uh, at this point going forward now, that's going to be a part of my strategy. So uh, this is a... Um, well, this is something that is going to be ongoing and well, we'll have to see what happens in the future. So I guess in me sharing this with you all, I guess some of you will become uh, my accountability partners in some way. So uh, I don't have much else to say right now, but that's cholesterol, HDL and LDL. And I think I'll end this video with this, is that keep in mind that your bodies, our bodies change as we get older. We can eat certain things. We can eat as much as we want of certain things when we're young. But as we get older, as we age, our bodies change. Our uh, metabolism changes. Our, our metabolic pathway changes. Our ability to clear certain things changes. 
and um, exercising and eating the right foods and eating certain foods and cutting certain foods out with the exception of maybe once or twice a year, if at all, that becomes critical. So that's why I posted that picture on my community tab. And this is the journey that I am on now. So I'm going to wrap this up. Let me know if you have any thoughts or uh, comments in the comments section below. Well, everyone, as I will be on this journey now to lower those numbers, look for more content on this topic as I learn more about this. As I learn, my subscriber base will learn as well. This is a whole area that can be discussed and which I will continue to cover as I am on this journey. It's a little scary, but it's good to know. Some people never go to the doctor. So some people don't know what's going on. And uh, at this stage, it could be worse. So it's good to know you can't fix something if you don't know that it's that it's there. This is Big Discussions 76, Science and Technology. My name is Dr. Anwar Youssef Dunbar. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. If you're a returning subscriber, please like and share. If you want to donate something to the channel, that information is below in the description box. Also, please consider joining the Big Words LLC newsletter. In addition to being a YouTube content creator, I'm also a writer with two blogs and a book project on the way. So with that, everyone, I will see you next time. As my father says, God willing. And uh, he does say that all the time, God willing. Uh, but now it, it has a new significance for me. So with that, everyone, always remember that your attitude determines your altitude. Always try to do your best. Take care, and I will talk to you the next time. Bye-bye.